these uh, stay-at-home restrictions, uh, some colleges are actually announcing they'll reopen their campuses to students this fall, but will end in-person classes after Thanksgiving over fears of a virus resurgence. Joining us now, Sal Khan, the founder and CEO of the Khan Academy, a free online education resource. Sal, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, so what do you think, th these colleges considering bringing students back early in the fall so they can wrap up the semester before Thanksgiving? Uh, how could schools uh, uh, from college uh, to kindergarten utilize some online uh, tools to supplement in-person education if the school year becomes so, uh, so shortened? Yeah, I think the universities, they're in a real bind right now because obviously a lot of what they bring to the table is being able to be on the quad and, and sit in the dorm room and have those late night conversations. And now in a world... You know, I think uh, where for sure when we get back into flu season or whatever it might be called COVID season now uh, in November, you might have to close down again. But most of the universities that I've been talking to, they, they, they are looking at this with eyes wide open. They're, they are realizing that they might have to uh, go straight to virtual right into back to school or some hybrid. Uh, so, you know, they're all using the, the standard tools we're all using now, the, the video conferencing software. A lot of them are using tools like Khan Academy for those early entry level courses. A lot are using uh, MOOCs and those types of platforms, and they're trying to digitize as quickly as they can. But it is it is a tough scenario because there's four or five different ways this could all go. You're at the forefront of online education. Uh, uh, as you know, the presidents of Notre Dame University, Rice University, they both told CNN today they, they're prioritizing bringing students back to campus safely. Is there something about in-person education that simply can't be replaced online? Yeah, I, you know, to be very clear, and I'm someone who in some ways represents a lot of online education, I would always take an in-person interaction with an amazing teacher over uh, technology any day for my own children, and by, by that, I, you know, pretty much anyone else's children. And so uh, pure online is never the way to go. Uh, it might You might have to go in that direction because of emergencies like this. Uh, the best world is you get the best of both worlds, even during times of regular school. You can use online to so that learning isn't bound by time and space. Uh, so that students can learn at their own time and pace, fill in their gaps. And then the in-person should always be about interaction. How do we leverage the humans when they're, when they're in the room together? And so if they do have to shut down physically, when they're using other tools uh, like video conferencing, I think that's the, the key element. How can you replicate as much of that person-to-person -person interaction as possible? But there's just those intangibles of just passing, meeting someone at the dining hall, being able to talk to a professor after class uh, that you're never going to get just pure online. Yeah, that's really important. Uh, I spoke to Professor Scott Galloway of NYU uh, the other day, and he predicts uh, this pandemic will permanently change the landscape of higher education. Do you expect it to do the same thing, for example, for elementary, uh, elementary school education? I think so. You know, I, I was I just talked to uh, Albert Carvalho, the superintendent at Miami Dade earlier today, and he was just talking about his scenario planning for back to school, where he sees a world where certain students are going to want to be in that physical experience uh, the way it always was, while a lot of other students are going to need a hybrid experience where they actually are able to do certain things better uh, from a home environment. And for certain kids, uh, maybe their family is moving around a little bit more, they might need a lot more of that virtual. And in that world where you're starting to cater to these different use cases, even the physical experience has to be a little bit more blended with the technology. You're going to have to put a camera in the classroom. And especially this coming back to school, whether you're talking about higher education or K-12, people are thinking about a shift-based model. Some kids come Monday, Wednesday. Some kids come Tuesday, Thursday. So in order to support the kids who aren't in the room, essentially you're going to have to be blended with virtual and physical all the time. Sal Khan, good to have you back in the Situation Room. Thanks very much for joining us.